Well, Chrissy, big week uh, for the team again. Three winners on Saturday. Uh, four. Another four winners on Saturday. Five. I was I was going to Kembla. Kembla. Oh, yeah, Melbourne. Melbourne. I was talking about Randwick. I was getting to Melbourne. And another big one, uh, big three at uh, Canterbury yesterday. Uh, how'd you celebrate? Uh, McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, uh, Katkin, she was impressive in Melbourne? She was. Um, she's a good horse lad. And I think when you can get a horse sort of winning or running second to most of their starts, it shows they've got that ability and can overcome a few problems, which she did on Saturday. Wide draw, sat wide, lost her balance a little bit in the straight and still picked herself up at one. So good effort and um, as we've said all along, I think it's a good race and already the winner of three listed or group races, I think. There's a big one not too far away. And of the winners uh, at Randwick, we had uh, Boban elevated to favouritism for the Epsom Handicap uh, next Saturday. Uh, it was pretty impressive. Pretty impressive, Liam. Um, <clears throat> really come of age as a, as a four-year-old and um, doing a good job. So he's been obviously helped by two good barrier draws. That's helped him settle, which has been the key to him all along. But if he gets a good draw in the Epsom land, he'll be hard to beat. And of the other feature race on that day, uh, Moriarty, obviously a big win on Saturday. Uh, were you killing the mail at the round? Um, similar sort of horse as, um, I don't know what other one, but we've got some good ones like him. And he's come, come back, each preparation better. And um, he's a very strong horse, and that's sort of showing in his finishes where he's quite explosive. And he should be peaking for the Metropolitan in two weeks. And then we might even have a sneaky look at a little Caulfield Cup lamb. Oh, well, there you go, punters. Uh, this Friday night, you had Red Tracer nominated uh, for the Moya Stakes, a Group 1 1200 metre weight for age contest. Um, you elected to not accept uh, because you thought the track would be dry. I think they copped 35 mil overnight and they raced on a wet track last Saturday. Have you got any excuses for not running it? Just that my advisors haven't been up to scratch, namely you and Peter. Um, but in all seriousness, we it was a bit of an afterthought to go down there after she tried so well. Look. Group 1s are obviously very important, but she's got a Group 1 next to her name, so we don't need to panic. Um, be nice to have two, but wouldn't it? It would be. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're not running on Friday. I've thought about how we can get her in the field, but they don't seem to let you once the fields are out. Anyway, seven winners uh, in seven days. Makes the training caper pretty easy. Um, that's what you see. That's what you think, but far from it. But... Uh, Obviously, we're going well going into a spring car. Right, let's get into this Saturday. Uh, Rose Hill Gardens, the home track. A uh, big team of runners, half the field in the first. And we'll kick off with Janoub. Um, good run first up after showing us very little in his trials or track work, so natural improvement would be expected. He's racing against Equator of Gaze, which will be very hard to beat. She had uh, two odds on pop get beat yesterday. Are you worried about the dollar forty eight? No, not at all. <laughs> I think it'll win. We're going to try and beat it somehow. Right, eh? Well, you've got you've got five runners. Martin's the next. Hugh Bowman with the big weight. Um, this is his distance. This is his type of race. Um, he'll be in the money. A cappella. Uh, she's going well. Very well. Got some got some good form now. Had a trial to keep her fitness levels up to the mark. Only three weeks between runs, but that's how quickly our horses can get away if we don't keep up to them. So hence the trial and. She should run well. Mulliken, uh, he was a noted front runner last campaign. He obviously over the shorter trip the other day, he was ridden quietly, but he seemed to attack the line well uh, off a slow pace. I don't think we ran him in front last time, did we? You rate him up on the speed a up few times. Speed, yeah, but we will do, but not this start. I want to ride him quietly. He's got a good sprint, this horse. <laughs> you know? Hey, you've been telling me. Well, I've been telling everyone. He gets yeah. in the last 638 and a half on good tracks. So he's definitely flying. He's going really well. He's going to win some good races this prep, but maybe not Saturday. Might be just one short. And multilateral. He's got the uh, obviously was well beaten by the top weight the other day, but uh, he's got a good pull in the weights. Good pull in the weights. Um, 
and he's going well. Probably step up to 2200 next start. I want to talk one of these owners into running on Wednesday. I think there's a 1900 metre race there that can be won. Just need one of the owners to see my side of it. So if anyone's listening, don't be afraid to say, Chris, we want to run Wednesday. <laughs> right, hey, Richard Calendar. <laughs> Stan Fox stakes over the 1500, uh, no runners, that's no good. Colin Stevens quality, over the mile and a half, another three runners in the field of eight, we'll uh, go with the Wild Cup winner, wasn't? Um, he's going pretty well, got a black eye after the Wild Cup, so just had to get that right, now it is, it hasn't missed any work. Um, awkward draw, I suppose we'll just ride him quite like we did at Wild, and, and um, yeah, once he's back in form, he's a pretty handy horse, man. Lunier, he knuckled over after the jump uh, last start and lost his rider. Uh, start prior to that, he was pretty disappointing. Did he return to form on Saturday? Uh, I think so, and it, especially if he can get the 2500 metre journey, uh, which I'd expect him to. He's an athletic, uh, fit type of horse, so good time to try. Obviously, he is out of form, but it's not an overly strong race. And he's, he's, he's shown the potential of a group winner, so. Should be very competitive. I'm imposing. Uh, superb run second up, just a bit flat the other day. Uh, yes, he was, and likewise with him, we've sort of been guessing a little bit with him and been a run behind, plus struggling with condition after a long layoff. So he's been placed at Ascot, hopefully Royal Ascot. I haven't quite checked that, but at 2400 metres, and that to me would say that he's got staying genes and help. Uh, Chris and Liam get him over the line on Saturday. Now this is this is another point I want to bring to your attention. Last four years, you just declare a superstar every year, and it's just a kiss of death. I've got to say, Vel Rosso was one. He's a good horse, but uh, geez, you were putting him in lofty heights of black caviar. Hasn't Champagne, racing yet. Champagne cast the next one. Thought it'd be unbeaten. Hasn't won a race this prep. Can she win on Saturday? Probably not, but I think she's still a good horse. And I'll be the first to say we can label a horse pretty early as most trainers do, some more than others. Just for those at home, Shatayla Fates, the next superstar, got beaten yesterday. But what normally happens when, <clears throat> if they do have a flat prep, normally we get it right and they do bounce back to that, um, that glory that we put on them, or supposing superstar status we put on them. So there's a few that we have labelled that have come out all right too, uh, Liam. Now you said Zusta was going to be a good author. <laughs> He's a superstar. It's going pretty good. Right, eh? the gold pendant, uh, Red Tracer. You elected not to go to Melbourne despite the 35 mils overnight uh, and more to come today. She stays at home with the outside draw in the gold pendant. She's going pretty well, Liam. I think she's ready to run a strong 1400. And <clears throat> it all depends on how much work she has to do and how good the others are, I suppose. They're all. Sydney form is very strong form, you can't underestimate any horse. Uh, but we've got a group one and consistent horse lining up and I think it should be pretty pretty hard to beat. The gleaming stakes uh, for the three year olds, Villanova, interesting, uh, you've, you've whacked a set of blinkers on and Jim Cassidy goes aboard. Yeah, it's switched him on too, he's worked very well through the week. Um, tough gleaming this year. May even wait for the Dulcify next Saturday, so if he's scratched on Saturday morning, we'll know why. But uh, with the blinkers on, he's certainly going to improve. Uh, race seven, uh, the lone runner in the Shannon Stakes, uh, the Group Two quality. Uh, Huiloni, interesting gear change since last prep. Well, we why, why do you get embarrassed when you talk about it? <laughs> you get so embarrassed. <laughs> he's been gilded, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and uh, for a different reason really, he's not big and heavy, which is quite often the case. Likewise, behaviour problems is the other main reason, but this horse has actually been a little bit lethargic, and um, he's not a dominant sort of a colt, and um, I'd say looking after himself, hence the reason for being gilded, and he tried well about 10 days ago, and he can run well fresh, Liam, so... Look for him getting home late, close to the rails, with a classic Jimmy Cassidy ride, and could be one for an upset. Ah, a bit keen on old Hoyland here. Well, not really, but he's going well. 
last race uh, of the day, the Pazalod Sprint. Uh, two runners for the stable. Tromso back in back in action with John Kissick aboard. A bit short for him, Liam. 1100 is totally different to a 1200 metre race. 1100, they put the foot down from the start and barely take it off. And it can quite often get a, a horse like a Tromso, more a 13, 1400 metre type horse off the bridle, chasing too far from home. So bear that in mind. But he's come up well, tried well, and yeah, if they do sort of give him a chance to keep up, he could, could sprint home well. And Hart Tester, uh Drawn well on Saturday and, and good good first up. Yeah, ran a good race. Um, probably a bit short for him too, but he's got good gate speed and put some blinkers on just to try and help maintain that speed and having the benefit of that first up running will be hard to do. Uh, monumental day through the week. Uh, one of the one of the guns of the stable shootout was retired by his owners, Linda and Graham Huddy. Um, very sad to see him go, but. Plenty of good memories? Yeah, plenty of good memories. Very good horse to our stable, as it has been to the Huddies. And I commend them for the way they've handled his career. And um, well done for making that decision on um, Monday, or it was Monday. Horses like him can go around for another two years. Obviously not at that elite level, but they can still win a group three race and things like that. But what's the use of winning 100,000 in one? It's three million, and I again commend the Huddies for making the decision. And I think we all were very proud um, for what he's achieved, and he'll be remembered for a long time. Everything else all right? Um, pretty good. Yeah. Everything's on track. I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good luck on Saturday, mate. Oh, thanks, Lee.